not even a trip across the pond or offensive coaching changes could ignite a recipe which could find the Detroit Lions in the win column with the league's worst record and Detroit looking to pick up the pieces from yet another shattered and lost season. The question is, what's next? For Motor City's football team, it's time for our weekly conversation with Mike Payton, editor of Side Lion Report, as he gets you up to date on everything relating to Detroit Lions football. We started this week's conversation by discussing what new majority owner Martha Firestone Ford needs to do to give her franchise a spark and a jolt of production. We're going to see some, uh, a lot of changes come about in, in the uh, off season. And uh, as for the future, it, who, who really knows at this point, uh, they're going to obviously go with the new coaching staff and new administration. Uh, uh, there's been some rumors uh, going around that maybe the forwards might want to sell. Obviously these are, uh, uh, very early rumors, and and uh, you know you take it with a grain of salt. But Dan Gilbert uh, is somebody who's very interested in purchasing the Lions, and uh, I think you're going to see a lot of changes in the future. Uh, you know, as for, I guess for as for the immediate uh, future, you know, they're just going to have to suffer through the next nine weeks. Uh, when we look at uh, uh, Jim Caldwell, when he met with the media yesterday, he was awfully. Uh, defensive in his posture and answering questions and I guess that's a, a product of a coach who knows she's uh, more than likely out at the end of the season would you assess that the right way or well I, you know I, I obviously I don't think Jim Caldwell's going to admit that his uh, his job is likely on the line and he's probably going to be out at the end of the year but uh, I think he probably knows uh, you know just as he did in his last year with Indianapolis that uh he probably doesn't have a whole lot of time left. Now, uh, when we look at uh, whoever owns this team, obviously uh, Martha Ford is now in charge, but do you think there is a real possibility the Lions could be sold? Well, there's a lot of red tape, and the, I mean, there's a lot of uh, different uh, uh, things that people would have to get past if they'd even want to by the by the team obviously you have to get past all the restrictions uh within the nfl and uh just to be considered to purchase the team and and obviously the the fords would have to go through the same uh, amount of restrictions just to sell the team so it's it's quite a it's quite a a thing to sell or buy an nfl team so i I mean even if they do decide to sell i i don't think it's going to be something that uh, happens right away it's probably going to be a a couple of the years now uh the lions have been in the ford family forever so do you actually foresee foresee them selling the team or no well i i you know i really can't see it uh as far as uh, you know, as you said, they've been in the the Ford family since 1963. Uh, back then, the the Fords bought it for uh, 4.5 million dollars, and today it's a, a 1.44 billion dollar uh, franchise. I mean, I, you know, it's nothing but profit for the for the Ford family. I find it pretty hard to uh, to see anybody walking away from that type of uh, financial success. You know, if they do decide to sell, I think it'll be more so. Uh, uh, Martha's uh, daughters, maybe they want to uh, cut bait and, and get out of the NFL business and, and just count their money. Now, uh, moving uh, to on the field matters, the Lions uh, uh, chose not to uh, trade Kelvin Johnson this week. I'm just wondering your thoughts on the Lions' inactivity at uh, the uh, trade deadline. Well, I don't think anybody can be surprised. Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, with de- trade deadlines, people get it confused with the NBA or the or Major League Baseball. Uh, the NFL just does not uh, make trades. They're just not really big on uh, making moves. I think the Vernon Davis to Denver trade was really the only thing that uh, that happened over the over the uh, the past week here. Uh, I, I'm not surprised that Calvin Johnson wasn't moved. 
you know, you're talking about, a, I mean, from a business aspect, this guy is, uh, is your cash cow. You know, you go to Ford Field on a Sunday, 98% of the people there are wearing Calvin Johnson jerseys. I think it's a pretty bad business move for the Lions to to trade Calvin Johnson, not to mention, uh, you know, the guaranteed money that they would have to pay him to go play somewhere else. It's, it's just not worth it. Now, uh, when we look at, uh, I know that at sideline report, you guys have pre- previewed uh, potential coaches uh, that could take over for Caldwell, assuming that he's, he's, he's gone. So could you give me a thumbnail on who who do you, who do you think uh, should be the next Lions head coach, and do, do you think they'll be able to attract a big fish or no? Well, I, I don't see why not. There's a lot of talent on this team. I think it's going to be one of the most desirable uh, teams to coach next year. But uh, by that same token, I think that there is going to be an awful lot of coaching uh, availability next next season because I do believe that. Uh, many coaches are going to lose their job this year. I think this is going to be one of the biggest Black Mondays we've we've ever seen, um, and and I think that you're going to see guys like Sean Payton and John Harbaugh and uh, you know guys like that are going to be available. And and if the Lions want to make a run at one of those, I wouldn't be surprised to see John Harbaugh maybe come home and uh, uh, coach down the down the highway from his brother and uh, or you know I think maybe they'll go after uh, like a Hugh Jackson over in Cincinnati or uh, if they want to maybe take on a, a guy who's never coached in the pros they might go with David Shaw from Stanford but uh, personally I think they're going to go with a coach that's uh, been there before won a Super Bowl has all the experience uh, that's most likely what they're going to do I don't see them rating anybody's uh, coaching staff or an offensive coordinator or anything like that. Well, I think Duke Harbaugh's coaching in the state of Michigan wouldn't uh, be a bad thing for uh, the state of sports here in the state anyway. Right. I think that's going to probably sell some tickets. Uh, now, when we look at what happened in London, obviously Matthew Stafford was sacked uh, six more times and the offense under Jim Bob Cooter looked a little bit lifeless and Again, I guess Alex Smith got his uh, cross-country license before he <laughs> took on the Lions because he was the leading rusher for the game. Um, so I'm wondering uh, your most glaring thing you took away from Sunday's game um, uh, in uh, London. Well, I think I think you're looking at a team that gave up after they stalled out on their first offensive drive and, and just never really... Uh, Never really came back to that game. I think you see uh, that Jim Caldwell's lost his team. Uh, there was no way he was going to get him back on Sunday. Uh, things went wrong immediately, and they they didn't uh, choose to deal with them. And, and obviously, you allow Alex Smith to rush for seventy yards or more. Uh, that is just a that is just a poor 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 performance. It's a it's a real sad state of affairs in Detroit right now. Now, when you look at what happened on offense, obviously the change in coordinator uh, didn't yield much results in terms of positively anyway. Uh, what what did you take away from uh, Jim Bob Cooter's first game as Lions offensive coordinator? Well, there wasn't a whole lot to take away. It, it, almost, uh, it almost seemed like Jim Bob was going out there and running Lombardi's scheme and uh, trying to make it work himself. And, uh, there was no imagination uh, put in put into the game plan. Uh, they did not choose to go deep to Calvin, or they, they really didn't change uh, anything. They just, uh, like I said, kept trying to go back and, uh, and and thrust that Lombardi scheme back into the the forefront, and it just it just didn't work out. And if that's what uh, Jim Bob's going to be doing for the rest of the year, I think he's blowing his one shot at uh, maybe making more of himself. Now, uh, when we, uh, when you listen to what uh, Jim Caldwell said yesterday before the bye, he said adjustments are coming on offense. What sort of adjustments do you think we could see on offense? And looking at the rest of the Lions' schedule, do, do you see a win anywhere for them? Well, I think that, uh, you know, I don't think this is going to be a team that goes 1-15. and I do believe that there are a lot of winnable games left. I think they could beat Chicago again, uh, probably, and, uh, you know, maybe a game like uh, Oakland or San Francisco. I mean, these are winnable games. Uh, as far as uh, adjustments goes, 
honestly, I think they need to go back to uh, just being simplistic, and uh, especially with their blocking scheme, they need to uh, rid themselves of of the zone blocking and just just go man to man and just you block the guy in front of you, and just that's really uh, going to open up some some running holes and uh, really just simplify the offense and, and hopefully keep Matthew Stafford on his feet. Now, uh, uh, oh. what sort of personnel changes would you see? on the current roster that that's on, on the current roster now that you don't think will return uh, next year? Uh, well, if I had to uh, pick out a few players I don't think are going to be here next year, I'd, I would have to say Joyke Bell, uh, Brandon Pettigrew, uh, maybe, uh, you know, Manny Ramirez. Uh, I think there's going to be – there's going to be quite a few. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Haloti Nada gone. I, I, I – do not expect Haloti Nada to re-sign here next year. Uh, you know, Tyron Walker, that's a tough one. I mean, I, he's only here on a one-year deal. He goes down with an injury uh, out for the season. Do you uh, do you bring him back next year or do you let his contract go? Uh, there's going to be some, yeah, there's going to be some sweeping changes, I think, on this, uh, on this entire depth chart. Now, uh, assuming that the Lions get – a top three picks in the draft. Can you see any uh, possibility possibility where they go uh, quarterback in the first round or no? Uh, I don't, not at all. Uh, I I know that uh, you know Matthew Stafford is is kind of in that same spot that Jay Cutler is with the Bears. Uh, the Lions are just handcuffed to him for for the next two years. If you know he's got a 11 million in, in dead money next year, he's got uh, north of 25 mil this year. There's no way that uh, the Lions are going to go ahead and move on and take a quarterback in the first round. Now they might w- take one uh, later on and uh, try to groom that quarterback for the future. I don't think Dan Orlovsky is going to continue to be their guy uh, as far as the number two backup goes. But uh, I think if you're looking for anything in the first round, it's probably going to be an offensive lineman. Now, when you look at, at the Ford family and as they try to rebuild this thing again, do you think they'll uh, bring an outside counsel from the NFL, uh, sort of an advis- advisory role on how to fix this? Or how do you think the Fords at the end of the season will go about up to fixing things around the league? Or for their team, sorry. Well, I, I don't know. You know, I, I wouldn't imagine that they would uh, go to the NFL uh, for this necessarily. I, I, you know, obviously there's going to be some consulting done, and uh, and they will have some people come in and, and do some advising. Uh, but as far as uh, going through the, you know, the rigors of uh, getting rid of your entire front office, I think that they're probably. Uh, should be and hopefully is a plan in place before they decide to to uh, let it Mayhew or Luan or both go. Uh, I think that they're probably eyeing somebody in Green Bay or New England as we speak. Are you surprised they haven't fired Jim Caldwell yet? Uh, I'm not. Uh, you know, if they if it's really simple, if they fire Jim Caldwell, you know, who do you promote to be your new head coach and? Uh, you know, obviously the season is wasted at this point, but you still you still have to put your best foot forward and, and try to win a couple games. Uh, you know, there's no sense in necessarily tanking. I don't think that there's any uh, once-in-a-generational player sitting there at number one. So, you know, having the first pick overall is, is not that uh, not going to be that big of a, a deal for the Lions. And uh, So I think they hold on to Caldwell for the rest of the year. Do you think uh, they'll have the first pick in the draft? Uh, I don't. Uh, at this point, I think it's pretty hard to argue that the, that they will have. Uh, I think they'll probably have a top five pick. I, you know, right now, I think the Titans or uh, uh, you know or the Texans or somebody like that will, or will have the number one pick, or maybe the Baltimore Ravens. Even it's uh, it's quite possible. Now, um, when we look at uh, what's happened around the league in terms of coaching firings, are you surprised that so many coaches are losing? their jobs midway through the season. I know that Ken Witham Hunt was fired uh, yesterday. Uh, Chuck, there's been rumors that Chuck Pagano 
will, will be out in Indy, and obviously Joe Philbin is already out, and the Colts also fired their offensive coordinator yesterday. So I'm just wondering uh, your thoughts on the rash of coaching firing that we've seen throughout the course of the season. Well, it's kind of turned into an epidemic. It's uh, you know, it's definitely not a normal thing to fire your coach halfway through the season. But uh, you know, I think at this point, the NFL is uh, is the Green Bay Packers and the New England Patriots, and then thirty other mediocre football teams that are trying to uh, scrape by and get into the playoffs. And uh, and for a team like Tennessee or, or uh, Miami, especially, you know, they can't afford to waste time. They need to be able to. Uh, get enough wins to maybe squeak their way into the playoffs. I think if anybody could do it, it's, it's uh, Miami at this point. They might be able to get in there. Uh, so, yeah, I don't I don't think that uh, that it should be much of a surprise that coaches are losing their jobs after uh, poor performances. Now, uh, when we look at this co- uh, current coaching staff, do you think any of the assistant coaches will be retained with whoever coaches this team next year? Well, I, I don't, um, you know, and that's the, you know, like guys like Jeremiah Washburn and Terry Heffernan were, were holdovers from uh, Jim Schwartz staff. And, uh, you know, that's all from Martin Mayhew recommending to Jim Caldwell that they stay. And, I, and you know, when the, when the Lions eventually make those changes this offseason, it's going to be anybody who's involved with anybody. So. Uh, you know, that's running back coaches, wide receiver coach, tight end coach. They're all going to be gone. I think you're looking at a, a completely brand new coaching staff. I think if anybody, if anybody at all stays, it's, it's probably maybe Gunther Cunningham. Are you even th- think they'll get rid of Terrell Austin too? Well, you know, that's that's a tough one. I I, I think that uh, when you look at Terrell Austin, you, you know, you you look at last year and and just how great that defense was, but. You know, at a certain point, how great the 2014 defense was is not going to be able to make up for how bad the 2015 defense has been. I think uh, Austin's chances of being a head coach in the NFL are, are definitely out the window. And if he does stick around in Detroit, I don't think that uh, anybody's going to be too upset about that. But uh, maybe maybe switch him back and have him be your secondary coach again or maybe a defensive assistant, uh, you know, or maybe he just remains the defensive coordinator. It really uh, remains to be seen. But at this point, I, I don't think that anybody remains. Now, uh, I know that uh, coaches like uh, Mike Shanahan uh, are looking to get back into uh, the league as coaches. So do you think any coaches that are currently out of the league are on the Lions radar to replace Caldwell? Well, it's possible. You know, Mike Shanahan would definitely be uh, one of those candidates that are going to be uh, highly touted coming into the offseason. I think most a lot of people are going to be looking to scoop him up. Uh, but as far as, you know, guys like John Gruden or Tony Dungy go, it's not going to happen. Uh, if, if anybody, I think the Lions might take a look into Brian Billick and uh, see if they can maybe get him out of the booth and back onto the uh, coaching staff. But but I would uh, probably be looking for somebody who's who's uh, in the mix as far as coaching goes right now. And uh, when you look at what the Fords have to do to uh, fix this thing, what do you think uh, is the first thing <laughs> they can do to get the fans back back on side? Well, they're going to have to, uh, you know, they're going to have to get a GM who knows football and who knows what uh, this team needs to help them out. The Lions have uh, a great amount of uh, draft picks next season. I believe it's uh, 13, 14 draft picks in the 2016 draft. So that is a lot to work with for whoever the next GM is. Uh, It's all going to come down to the right guy getting the right uh, ingredients uh, that you know, and, and and hopefully getting somebody that can protect Matthew Stafford and somebody that can uh, can help out on defense. And, and there's there's a lot going to be going on. And, and I guess the other good thing is that you know whoever gets this job is going to be coming into a, a, a basically a brand new salary cap uh, type situation where they don't have a guy like Indomitian Sue choking uh, the salary cap anymore. They're, they've got uh, enough money to go out and, and make some offers. And, 
So, you know, there could be some exciting things happening next in the offseason. Now, um, now, the great unknown for the Lions is Martha Ford. No one exactly knows what she's going to do. How much of an X factor do you think uh, her decision making process will be in this process? And certainly, uh, she, she traveled to London, so she couldn't be happy with what she saw uh, when the Lions took on the two. So, how much of an X factor do you think her decision making pro- process or, or mindset will be in this whole scheme of things? Well, I, it's the number one mindset. I mean, it, she is the X factor as far as uh, decision making goes with this team. Uh, Bill Jr. has uh, has recently said that he's he's out. He hasn't uh, hasn't really done anything with the Lions since uh, last season. Uh, so it's all on Martha's shoulders. If if she's gonna fix this team, uh, you know she's gonna have to get it done. I mean, she's 90 years old, uh, so she obviously doesn't have much time left in, until uh, the the team reverts over to her daughters or reverts over to to Bill Jr. If he wants to uh, take it on, but. Yeah, it's all on her shoulders, and and, and uh, you know she's. I, if I were her, I would, uh, I, w- I would get some consultants to come in and uh, and help me find the right GM. Now, my last question this week, Mike, has to do with the national perception of the team, in, in terms of what do you think is the national national purview of the Lions? They made the playoffs a year ago, but this season has gone completely downhill so what do you think is the national perception of the of the club well it's real simple it, it, you know and if you ask anybody in uh you know wyoming what they think about the detroit lions they, they're probably going to bring up something about 0 and 16 or uh, or what have you i mean the lions have been the worst franchise in, in nfl history it's as simple as that and and I don't think that uh, last year making the playoffs and having the second best defense changes the perception in anyone's minds. Uh, you know, I, I, if you if you look back on going into that playoff game against Dallas, everybody thought they were the Lions were going to lose. So nobody ever believes in the Lions, and and uh, and I think it just got it's it's a lot worse right now. Obviously, uh, you know, Jim Caldwell called the the media room the dungeon of doom yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, you know. I understand what he's saying as a as a part of the media. I, I get that uh, there is some negativity there, but uh, what what good do we really have to write about at this point? Uh, you know, I hate to say it, but it's pretty hard to be positive when you the team you're covering is one and seven. Mike, we'll both have a good weekend because the Lions don't play this weekend. Yeah, there's. I guarantee you, the Lions don't lose on Sunday. Well, at least on the field. <laughs> at least on the field, right? Mike, we want to thank you for your time this week uh, for uh, talking Lions football with us, and we'll uh, talk to you uh, next week before the Lions uh, take on the Packers in Green Bay. Have a good week. You too. Thank you.